Hi guys, welcome back. In today's video, I am sharing with you my December slash Christmas book haul. So I have some very exciting things in this book haul, you guys. Some of this is gifts from family, from friends on booktube who I'm like, so grateful to. And then some of this is other things that I've gotten through the month. Although I would say the bulk of this is things that were sent to me. I've been pretty good about not buying too many books. I'm very proud of myself, although I do have two uh, pre-orders that came in and then my book of the month box. So let's go ahead and get into this. So first up I thought I would share what I grabbed from book of the month for December. Um, I got this very late. I think with the holidays there were some shipping delays, but I did end up getting it and I'm very excited about the books in here. So I'm going to share it with you guys. I have my main pick and then I had two add-ons. Full disclosure, I am an affiliate for Book of the Month Club. I really like them and I paid for this service prior to becoming an affiliate. Every month you get a new release hardcover book for $15 including shipping and you get to select from five curated titles usually from a variety of genres and if you're not interested in any of the titles for a month you can always skip and just do it the next month which I like that feature a lot and then you can also put in up to two add-on books for $10 each and this actually includes the YA books so what I've started doing is sometimes getting YA books for my add-ons if there's ones that I'm interested in so anyway I really like them I think it's a nice subscription. It's been fun. If you're interested in joining, I do have an affiliate link down below that you can use to join and there is a code that you can use to get your first box for $9.99. Um, that said, let's go ahead and open this up. My pick for December is also the Patreon pick for our January book club and that is The Wives by Taryn Fisher. I'm really excited about this. It's a thriller about a woman who knows that she's one of three wives that her husband has and one day she gets curious and decides to follow him and find a way to meet one of the other wives and it turns out the other woman doesn't know about the setup doesn't know that she's not the only one and then starts having signs of like domestic abuse and uh they don't know who the third woman is so I don't know the, the premise just sounds really really interesting we're going to be reading this in January for my Patreon book club which my Patreon is linked down below if you're interested in that as well but uh yeah very curious to see how this goes. I've not read Taryn Fisher before and so this seemed like a great opportunity. And then for this month I had two add-ons and they're both YA books. The first one is Dangerous Alliance, an ostentatious romance by Janiki Cohen. This I originally heard about from Alexa Dunn. I think she reviewed an early copy of it and was like raving about it and it sounded super fun and interesting. I love Jane Austen. It's a story about a young woman who enters Victorian society using Jane Austen's novels as her advice on how to manage things. It sounds like so much fun so I'm definitely excited to pick that one up. And then the other book that I added this month was Heartstrings and Other Breakable Things by Jacqueline Firkins. This is a debut YA contemporary romance and I think it's a retelling of Mansfield Park by Jane Austen. So <laughs> if you're seeing a theme we have like two sort of Jane Austen related YA books this month and both of them sound like a lot of fun. Moving on I'm very proud of myself. This month I only have three books that I purchased. I have two pre-orders and one book that I got while I was on a trip with my husband. I can't believe that's all I've bought. Go me. I like that's I'm very proud of myself guys. <laughs> so I'm going to show you guys the books that I actually purchased for myself first and then we'll get into some of the gifts and books that have been sent to me for review. It's very exciting. I didn't realize I had done so well. That's awesome. Okay so two pre-orders this month. One of them came in at the very end of November so it didn't make it into that video. This is The Gentleman's Guide to Getting Lucky by Mackenzie Lee. This is a little novella about Monty and Percy, the two main characters in Gentleman's Guide to Vice and Virtue, which I really loved. This little novella originally was just in e-format as a pre-order incentive and they decided to turn it into its own cute little book. And uh, yeah, it sounds like fun. It, I, when I saw it was coming out I had to get it and it's like, it's just so cute. Like, let me show you. Like, look at all the like little artwork, and like, it's just, it's really adorable. Um, I really loved Monty and Percy. I think they're super cute, and I'm excited to have this. So, yeah, I pre ordered it. It's just a little, little novella for a day that I need a fun little novella. And then the other thing that I pre ordered is Children of Virtue and Vengeance by Tomi Adeyemi. This is the follow up to Children of Blood and Bone, which I really loved. This is the Barnes and Noble exclusive edition, which is pretty cool because it does include some extras like this art print. 
and map. So let me see if I can like open this up. So in the back we have a map and then on the other side is like some fan art. So that's kind of fun. And then I think it also includes uh, like an interview with the author or something like that. And it's just so pretty. And look at it. It's beautiful. Also, it is a much smaller book than the first one, which is interesting. So I am hoping to pick this up relatively soon and see how I feel about book two. And then the final book that I picked up was when my husband and I took a trip to New Haven. While we were there, I made this video that I'm like, not a lot of people have watched, but I'm pretty proud of it because it was really fun, where I did a walking tour of Yale with all of the places in Ninth House by Lee Bardugo. I'll link that video up above if you want to check it out. Please do. I thought it was really cool and it was cool to see like the actual places these real secret societies exist. I don't know, it was really fun. Anyway, so while we were there, we had a really lovely weekend while my mom stayed with our kids not a thing we get to do very often. It was really nice. We had like two nights away and just got to like hang out and walk around New Haven and go to museums. It was so fun. And uh, of course we had to go to a bookstore. So we went to the Atticus bookstore and I decided to get a mystery staff recommendation because it just sounded like fun. I always like these sorts of things. This was the book I picked up there. And um, I will read you, I have opened it already, but I kept the paper. So I'll read you guys what it says about it and then show you what the book is. It says, of course this book had me with an anthropologist love triangle set in 1930s New Guinea. I'm only human. Luckily, it is also gripping from page one, well paced and smart, a surprisingly thoughtful inquiry into what it means to learn another culture and the myopic presumptuousness of Western superiority. So that just like grabbed my attention more than anything else. And so the book ended up being Euphoria by Lily King, which apparently won the Kirkus Prize. I had not heard about this, but also this is not the sort of thing I was reading when it was published. Um, it looks like it was a book of the year in 2014, so it's a little bit of an older one, but it sounds really interesting. So I'm hoping at some point to pick this up. Let me know if anybody else has read this or has this on their radar. Um, yeah, sounds pretty cool. So that was my book that I picked up while we were in New Haven. And then everything else is pretty much gifts or things that were sent to me. Other than I did have one book that I picked up for free in our building. People sometimes leave books they're done with and this looked interesting. It's Of Love and Other Demons by Gabriel Garcia Marquez. Um, I know that he won the Nobel Prize and this is uh, it translated. I don't think I've ever really read anything from him and this was kind of like a smaller book and so I thought you know what I'm just gonna pick this up. What is this actually about? Like did I even look? I don't know. It's about a 12 year old girl who is the only child of a decaying noble family in 18th century South America who's bitten by a rabid dog and then believed to be possessed, and so she's brought to a convent for observation. This is so wild. And then the father falls in love with her? What? Weird. Okay, yeah, so this sounds very strange, but I'm curious, so we'll see. I don't know. Um, but it was free in the building, so I picked that up. All right, moving on, I wanted to share all of my book and bookish holiday gifts. First up is a really sweet gift from one of my friends and patrons, Ashley from Books with Ashley over at Instagram. She sent me this really sweet ornament. Um, it has pieces of book pages from Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire in it. It's from like an Etsy shop and I just thought it was so cute. So we put that on a tree. So thank you to Ashley. That was just like a really sweet little Christmas gift. And then, staying with the Harry Potter theme, my dear friend Lienna from Lienna's Library, who knows very well what Hogwarts house I am, got me this beautiful Slytherin journal. Thank you, Lienna. I really love it. It's got like a nice ribbon thing so I can keep my place in it and just like a great journal for like writing and keeping up with stuff. So thank you. That was such a sweet gift and I love it. I feel like I should do maybe some Slytherin Instagram pictures in the next month. We'll see. There were also a few people who very kindly sent me things off my Amazon wish list, which was really sweet. Um, first up, Julie over at Pages and Pens, who I really love, we've been like booktube friends for a while now, sent me Queen of Air and Darkness by Cassandra Clare. Thank you so much, Julie. This was so awesome. I'm really happy to have this. Um, this was the last one that I needed to complete the series. I'm collecting them in these editions because I just, I like them. They're not quite as enormous as the hardcovers are, and I just like the picture that they make when they put together. So thank you, Julie. That was so sweet of you. And then my dear friend Mara over at Books Like Woe sent me two things. One is a little novella from Alyssa Cole. As we all know, one of my favorite romance authors, and I'm kind of slowly collecting all 
all her stuff. This is a little novella, Agnes Moore's Wild Night, which is like a Highlander romance type thing that she did. Um, so that sounds like fun. That'll be like a nice quick little read. And then she also sent me this beautiful Penguin Cloth Bound Classic edition of Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. Thank you. It's so pretty. I really love Frankenstein also. Um, I just think it's a really fantastic classic and this was just so thoughtful. And Mara, if you don't know, is known for having like an incredible Penguin Clothbound Classics collection. I don't, I have a few, so I'm very, very happy to add this to my little collection of them. Um, thank you, Mara. It's beautiful. But if you want to see like a big collection of them, oh my gosh, hers is amazing. So I think she actually has a video where she does a tour of all of them. If you like that sort of thing, they're really pretty. Then my sweet friend, Melanie over at Mel to the Any, who is such a sweetheart and I just absolutely love her, sent me a copy of Becoming by Michelle Obama. Thank you so much, Melanie. I really, really love her memoir. It's awesome. I had listened to it on audio from my library and really wanted to own a finished copy and so it was so sweet of her to get me a copy. One of the things that's really cool about this that I'm excited to look through is um, the physical copy has all of these pictures in it, which is awesome. I always love this. Like That's like one of my favorite things about memoirs is getting to like see pictures of people from different parts of their lives. So if you haven't read it, definitely recommend it. Um, it's very, very good. Thank you. I'm just like, it's so sweet. So sweet. Um, okay. Then Amanda from the Naughty Librarian bought me a copy of a book that I really loved. This was one, this was among my favorite romances of 2019. And that is The Bromance Book Club by Lissa K. Adams. Thank you, Amanda. I love this. It's so cute. Um, so you'll hear about this in my, I think it's like 11 nerdy romances of 2019 that I loved. This was definitely among my favorites. I just think it's so, so good. And this was so sweet of her. I'm so happy to own a finished copy of it. I had an arc, which I've sent on to somebody else. And so now I have a copy for my own collection. I'm going to probably collect all the books in the series because they, I think, will be a lot of fun. And then maybe one of the most exciting bookish gifts that I've received this year was uh, from my friend Isabella at the Feminist Bookworm on Instagram. She sent me an arc of one of my most anticipated reads of the year. As I'm filming this, I'm currently in the middle of reading it and vlogging it. So by the time this goes up, that sh vlog should be done. So I will link it up above. But that is <sighs> House of Earth and Blood, Crescent City by Sarah J. Mass. I've, I like, I freaked out when I opened this. I was so excited to have this. Also, guys, it's a tome. If you haven't seen, it's enormous. It's like 800 pages long. So far, I'm really enjoying it. Um, this is where I'm at right now. So I'm reading this. There will be a reading vlog. Again, if you haven't seen it, I'm sure it'll be up by the time this video goes up. So I'll link that up above. But yeah, this is her adult debut. It is kind of like, it feels more like an urban fantasy than other things we've gotten from her. But so far, I'm really enjoying it. It is long. Like, could it be shorter? Sure. Am I mad about it? Not really. <laughs> like, I'm still really enjoying it. So it's been a lot of fun. And I would say, she's doing a lot to correct some of the criticisms of her work in the past in terms of diversity and overly alpha male love interests. Like she's kind of doing some course correcting. I will, of course, like if you're not into her writing style, you're still not going to like this. But if you like her writing style, it's really good, really fun. So that was really amazing. Thank you, Isabella. I like, oh, that was very exciting. But seriously, thank you so much to everybody. I have some of the most amazing bookish friends over here and it was just, I like really, really appreciate it. Uh, okay, moving on, I have some gifts from my kids and husband, which I wanna share that I'm very excited to have. First up is actually not a book, it's a movie, but I'm really excited to watch it. This is Downton Abbey, the motion picture. I and my husband both like were really into the show and I'm excited to watch the movie. Maybe we should do that tonight, actually. Hmm we need something fun to do tonight that would be interesting um so yeah really excited to have that and then my wonderful husband who is the absolute best got me three books that I'm super excited to have off of my wish list very very awesome the first one is a book that Liana at Liana's library has been talking a lot about and I'm excited to pick it up it's a indie published fantasy romance this is Trick Foolish Kingdoms book one by Natalia Jester Jaster um, I like the cover art. I don't really know that much about it except that it's a fantasy romance and Liana 
doesn't like a lot of romances, so when she does, you know they're probably pretty dang good, so I'm excited to give this one a try. He also got me a copy of The Institute by Stephen King. So I have actually never read anything by Stephen King before, and uh, maybe this will be my first one. I don't know. I've heard really good things about it, and based on hearing other people's reviews, this sounds like the, the sort of thing that I would like and be interested in. Um, whereas some of his earlier books, I'm a little like, oh, I don't know how I feel about that. But yeah, I don't know. Like if I read this, should I vlog it? Should I vlog like reading my first Stephen King book? I don't know. But yeah, so my husband gave me this one. We'll see. And then lastly, rounding out my collection of at least of what exists so far, he gave me the illustrated edition of Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. It's so beautiful. These books are absolutely stunning. I'm so happy to have them. And in like a year or two, when my kids are a little older, I'm hoping to do a reread of the Harry Potter series and read them with them using the illustrated editions because these are like perfect for reading aloud. And they're just so beautiful. Like, I mean, oh my gosh, like just flipping through them is amazing. Mm. And this was the last one that I was missing and the last one that's been published so far. Like, just the artwork. Oh my gosh. Let me find something to share. The dragon and like, I don't know guys, it's just, these are just so stunning. Look at the, I love, I love, love, love all the art. So a huge thanks to my husband who's really wonderful. I'm like, my Harry Potter shelf is taking up more and more space, but I'm okay with that. <laughs> Moving on, I have a few more books to share with you that I was sent in the last month or given. And the first one, I'm really excited to have a finished copy of this. I originally read it as an ebook. This is I Hope You Get This Message by Farah Naz Rishi. Um, so this is a YA debut that is kind of a mix of contemporary and speculative. It follows three teenagers potentially looking at the end of the world. There's these aliens who may in a week destroy Earth and it's kind of about all of these teens kind of trying to find closure on different things in their lives and deal with their trauma and um, it's really really good. And also Farah is absolutely lovely. If you haven't seen it yet, because I feel like again not a lot of people have seen it, I will link it up above, but I actually did a really cool video with Farah where we spent the day together in New York City and did a bunch of like holiday bucket list things in New York and then also did some like interview questions in between and it was really fun. She was absolutely lovely. I'm also excited to see what we get from her next. This was fantastic. The next book that she's working on is more of a romantic comedy. So yeah and it's diverse. It is own voices for the Muslim representation. One of the characters is this like nerdy Muslim teen boy who's just a total cinnamon roll and it also deals with mental health and just a lot of stuff. It's a really I think good book. And uh, yeah, I'll link my video with her up above if you guys want to go and check it out. I hope more people will watch it because I think it was really great. And yeah, thank you to Farah. So she gave me a copy and signed it when we hung out that day, which was just like a cool thing to have as like such a great memory. Then I was sent an arc of a book that is coming out in March that I've actually already read. So you're going to be hearing about this in my December wrap up, which also should be up. So I will link that up above. <laughs> Like I'm kind of like pre-filming a whole bunch of videos for January. So this I have actually already read. I have a review and you'll be hearing about it in my wrap up. This is Anna Kay, A Love Story by Jenny Lee. Like I said, this goes on sale in March. Thank you so much to the publisher for sending me a copy. This is a YA contemporary retelling of Anna Karenina. Um, and it is really good. I will say the first third of this book, I kind of had a hard time getting through. There was some really tough content and material in it. It is quite dark and bleak, but then the second two thirds of the book I think becomes more fun and more soapy. The way I've been kind of describing this just in terms of tone is it reminds me of almost like The Goldfinch by Donna Tartt meets Gossip Girl um, because I think The Goldfinch has more of the sort of like dark side of things with like drug use and mental health issues and stuff but it also has some of this like gossip girl element to it and I spent I think especially in the second two-thirds of the book you really start to get that and I think this is really rich in terms of the themes that it deals with so yeah I really liked it this is not going to be the book for everyone but I think a lot of people are going to kind of gobble it up and it's being developed for a tv show on HBO Max which I could see that doing very very well 
Also, there is a lot of sex in this book, especially for a YA book. Um, so, and I have like mixed feelings about how that was handled. I think in general, I like it and I like the sort of nuanced way that things are considered. My main issue with it is that there's very little, if any, discussion of like safe sex and contraceptives. And that to me felt very lack, especially for a YA book that so heavily deals with sex. But I did really like it and I like I actually sent an email to the editor about that and she said she appreciated it and wanted to look into like how they might have deal with that going forward. So I don't know what the finished copy is going to look like in terms of that but yeah I would recommend checking it out. I think it's a really interesting one and I think a lot of people are going to like it. There's an arc that was like whole long, you know like a whole review in this book haul. <laughs> Um, I promise I won't do that for the other ones. And I have four other books that were sent to me. A couple of them are books that I was not expecting to receive. First up, Fierce Reads sent me Seven Endless Forests by April Genevieve Tuholke. This I think is a companion novel to The Boneless Mercies, which came out a couple years ago. I never got around to reading that one and heard kind of mixed reviews of it, but like the premise sounded interesting. This is like a shorter book and it says it's a bold tale of adventure, vengeance, and sisterhood. Um, it is a standalone companion novel that a review called a cathartic war cry advocating for the power of girls and women. Um, and it's a gender bent retelling of the King Arthur legend. That actually sounds pretty interesting. So maybe I'll pick that up. This one is coming out in March of 2020. Then my friends over at the Harlequin publicity team sent me a copy of Blood and Blade by Lauren Dane. And this is, this is a book in an urban fantasy series that just sounded really interesting. I have not read anything by this author. I've not read the other books in the series, um, but I think maybe this is book two the goddess with a blade series vampires and powers from a goddess and i don't know sounded like a whole lot of fun so thanks to harlequin for that um i was sent this for promotion on instagram so i'll be taking an instagram picture of that one then amazon publishing sent me a book that is like not necessarily super up my alley but i wanted to share it with you guys in case one of you are interested this is last day by luann rice this one goes on sale february 1st and it is a murder mystery and kind of family drama that deals with loss and like a painting and i don't know not really the kind of thing i'm super interested in but i will say the book itself is really pretty like look at that naked hardcover it's really beautiful so if that sounds more up your alley definitely go check it out thank you to amazon for sending me a copy and lastly, I was sent a book from my friends over at the Little Bird publicity team. Um, and this is actually something I have an e-arc for that I'm planning on reading and getting to soon. I think by the time this goes up, it will be published. It's coming out on January 7th. And this is The Country Guest House by Robin Carr in the Sullivan's Crossing series. I read the first one and really enjoyed it. If you like kind of sweet small town romance, I think these are good for that. This one follows a woman who has suddenly become the guardian to a five-year-old and moves to a small town and stays in someone's guest house and the guy who owns it has a dog and they develop a relationship. I think it'll probably be like another sort of sweet heartfelt romance so if you like that sort of thing go check it out. There you go. Those are all of the books that I received in December. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much to my amazing friends for sending me like some of these incredible gifts. It just means the world to me and I really appreciate it a lot. Um, yeah, and I'm so proud of myself for not buying books this month. I only, like, almost at all. Almost at all. Two pre-orders and one other purchase. Like, go me. <laughs> so, okay. It has also been, like, a crazy month. December has been sort of nonstop, so I haven't really had a moment to breathe anyway. But, um, yeah, really, really happy with that. Talk to me in the comments down below. Let me know any of your thoughts or feelings on any of the books that I shared or talked about. I know this is kind of a long, chattier book haul than usual, but hopefully you guys enjoyed it. And for your question of the day, let me know what was one of the highlights of your holiday season. If you got anything you're excited about, if you did anything you're excited about, let me know. I would love to hear from you. If you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you want to see more. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time.